Last week, we talked a little bit about the challenges with Google Analytics and the impact that privacy laws are having on our ability to accurately attribute and report on the effectiveness of our ad campaigns. We wrap that up by talking about first party data and how you can utilize first party data to start to overcome some of those challenges in marketing attribution, tracking, reporting, and ad serving. So today, we just wanna dig further into that topic for you. Welcome to Down and Digi, where we're getting down to the business of digital marketing. I'm your host, Karina Keys. So first party data is really information that you have gathered, that you have stored, that you've collected yourself, you own it on your clients, your prospects, your target market and your, your industry segment. All of those pieces of information come together to provide insights that you can then analyze and utilize to make smarter decisions for your organization. So, First party data can really be collected from a multitude of areas. You can gather it from your website, interactions that are happening on your website, your analytics, um, form fills, pages visited, time on site, content read, blogs that are being read. All of that provides data insights. Your customer feedback, obviously your CRMs, information that you have that has your customer contact information, name, address, past history, purchase history is all first party data. Social media interactions is first party data. It's all information that you own on your own clients that can then be analyzed and used for smarter efforts. First party data is really the most reliable information that you can have on understanding your clients and their journey, what they're looking for and what they want from you when they engage with you. It's also one of the most affordable pieces of data that you could ever use in your marketing and advertising efforts. It comes from the history of your organization, although I will recommend cleansing it from time to time so it's still accurate. But it's information that you can then do with as you will within the confines of the law to be able to make some decisions, do ad targeting, do ad serving, create custom messages for each one of your clients based on what you currently know about them. We know from experience and from research that customers really want you to use the information that they have given you to be more accurate and more precise in your messaging to them. They don't want you to send them generic messages. They're telling you about them. They're giving you information with every single interaction and they expect you to hold on to that information and use it when you communicate back with them. It's kind of like walking into a room in a business that you've been working with for a really long time and them not remembering your name or not remembering that you have children or not remembering what you've purchased from them in the past. They're all business faux pas that you would never do in person at a gathering of other businesses in your business community, people that you've worked with in the past. It's the same way you need to treat your clients, your customers, your prospects. Take all that information and use it effectively to create personal marketing efforts. So another key benefit of operating with first party data is that it complies with all of the global privacy laws that are being enacted, that are currently in place, and that we expect to come in the next year or two. Because those privacy laws really are going to limit our ability to utilize third party data, to use other platforms, to use other people's information to do our target marketing. And that kind of feels like we're taking 10 steps backwards in our capabilities as it comes to creating a really unique user experience for every person on the web. That data allows us to make sure every website that's loaded, every ad that's served is relevant to the person that's viewing it. The privacy laws, while good, are going to limit that capability a little bit. So by us gathering our first party data and using it effectively, we're going to be able to maintain some of that communication and some of that relationship. So there are a lot of ways that you can start gathering first party data. If you're not already doing it, talk to your marketing teams today and get started. It can be everything from interactions on your website, newsletter signups, download requests, inquiries that come through. Just qualify those as much as you possibly can. So if somebody's asking for or signing up for your newsletter, 
add a little qualifier and a little checkbox of what type of information that they're looking for from you. They're going to tell you because they want that newsletter to be effective for them. They want it to be a good use of their time. Track your purchase history and incorporate it into a CRM or some sort of tool that allows you to match up every single client record so that your marketing team and your sales teams know what that client has purchased from you in the past. It's going to give indicators of what they might like to purchase in the future or maybe repeat buys. So start today. Gather the information, utilize it, share it with your marketing teams and understand how um, the information you currently have is being stored, where it's being stored and how it's being analyzed. Thanks for joining us today for Down in Digi. I do hope you know more now than you did five minutes ago. And if you have any questions on first party data or third party data, where it's stored, how to utilize it, how to analyze it, please reach out. Our team would be more than happy to come have a conversation with you and share what we know. Until next week, cheers.